I wanted to do a quick update video to a previous video I did discussing LoRa dataset creation workflows. Now in those videos, we used SeaDream and Nano Banana Pro to create our images for the dataset, both of which are paid models. And a lot of you guys have been asking, is there an open source alternative or cheaper option to doing the same process? And so with the release of Quan Image Edit 2511, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to maybe streamline this a little bit and provide that open source alternative. So in this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about these new workflows and any changes from the original philosophy. So if you haven't seen that original video, I would recommend going back and watching that first, then coming here. As in that video, I talk more about the logistics and full LoRa dataset creation process, whereas here I'm just mostly updating that process. So on the note of changes, there's really nothing new. The key thing, obviously, is that we're no longer using API calls to Nano Banana or SeaDream. We are using Quan Image Edit. So we'll start at the prompts. You now have this optional global negative prompt. You don't necessarily need to use this. I haven't used it at all, but I wanted to give that option without you guys needing to go in and set it all up manually because it's obviously, you know, a lot to go through. So this is here for you if you want to use it. Here are the base prompts and you're more than welcome to change these however you want. We'll look at the results from these prompts in just a second here, but that's pretty much it for this section. Pretty straightforward. Over here in the settings is where you can load your image. You also have this fast group bypasser, which helps you quickly limit the amount of generations you need. So for example, you can start with the full eight base prompts that I have loaded in here. And let's say you wanted an additional two images with your own custom prompts. You could bypass these last three batches here and change just these first two prompts to get what you need, generate those images and turn everything else back on. Then we also have some file saving logic here. So if you're making a lot of different character Lauras, this can make it very easy to kind of separate between the two without needing to dig through your comfy UI folder. So all output puts generated using this workflow and the second workflow that we'll look at will all be saved to a silent snow folder within your outputs folder. Finally, the most important section of this workflow is your model loaders. Now, the biggest one is obviously the diffusion model. In this case, we're using the full BF16 version and running this in RunPod on a 5090 GPU. But if you're trying to run this locally without having any sort of overhead, you can use a GGUF loader to use a quantized version if you can't fit the full model. And to do that, you'll need to install the correct GGUF model for your hardware from the links in the description and replace this load diffusion fusion model node with a GGUF loader node and simply plug this in here. Then you can get rid of this diffusion model and you're good to go. We also do have the Quan Image Edit Lightning 4-step LoRa here, which is also included in the description and on the Patreon guide, the Edit Skin LoRa, and then the Clip and VAE are the same from the 2509 model, so if you already have that, you're good to go. But if not, I also have links for that in the Patreon guide. And so we can take a quick look at the results from this workflow with the base prompts. So we can see these first two just get you kind of the side profiles. And to be honest, the results are pretty good. I personally see this as a really good alternative to the nano banana option that we looked at in the original video. I think the skin comes out pretty good. There's definitely still a little bit of that Quan plastic effect, but it does a pretty good job. Here's kind of a good example of what I mean. We can see the original input image has quite a lot of detail. And as we come across, a lot of that detail is still there, especially with the important freckles and such. Like if we look around the nose, right? But overall, I think it still has a bit of that Quan effect. So if you really want to make the most of this data set, I would recommend maybe a soft skin refinement pass. But also, I do think that these results are good enough to use just as is. And here's another great generation. Again, we can see that kind of Quan plastic skin effect coming through, especially relative to the input image. You can also extend this pretty easily, just like the original workflow that we looked at. Now it is a little bit more work, so I'll walk you guys through it. If you want to add more generations onto this, what you can do is copy just one of these sections, come over here near your prompts, click on the canvas and hit control V. And so now we'll see that a lot of the main nodes are already hooked up for you, like the clip, the VAE, the model, the latent, 
but there are still some additional variables that you need to adjust in here. So the first is obviously your input image and also the prompt. Input image is easy. You just grab this, load it here into the image one slot. And then for your prompt, you can just copy one of these and paste it, write your new prompt and stick it in here. And if you are using a negative prompt, connect the global negative prompt into the negative processing node here. And then finally as well, we'll add our image in here. Then last but not least, hook up your image to the image compare node just to make sure that that functions properly. And to make sure that the files also saved with the rest of your images, drag down this batch name node here and you'll see a CR combined prompt node hidden in the back. You can grab this and just drag it to the save image node. So now you've completely hooked up a new section. You can grab everything and drag it down here. And so I know that this looks super complicated, by the way, guys, I tried to keep this pretty clean. Um, I mean, I was doing this after Christmas day, so it is a little bit messy, but realistically, there, there's really not too much to worry about here. All you need to focus on is what model you're loading, how many images you want to generate, and what prompts you have. That's really it. So this is the replacement for the first part of our LoRa dataset creation workflow that we looked at. And now here is the second part of the dataset creation process. This one is extremely straightforward, and the setup is pretty much exactly the same as the first workflow we just looked at. You have your settings again, same file saving nomenclature, your optional negative prompt, and your load image node. And then again, you'll want to hook up your diffusion model or GGUF model here. All the LoRa's are staying the same. And basically what this does is it takes your reference image, so we can see here, and creates a brand new image for you of that character, no prompting needed. And you can run this basically an infinite amount of times. So I'll give you guys an example of that. We'll pull out our kind of run process here. We can see that our batch count is set to one. What we're going to do is pump this up to let's say eight. And all you have to do is click run. And so again, we'll watch this work all together. I think this is a pretty cool process, something that we've been working on. I think it needs some work still. Um, some of the images you get are a little questionable in the sense of like the environment doesn't match the outfit or the pose. So sometimes the generations you get are a little weird, but overall the results can be really good. And I found these to be pretty solid for LoRa dataset creation especially with the new 2511 model that does a pretty good job at character consistency and I do think that the overall skin and quality is a little bit better from what we were seeing with the 2509 model like that's a fantastic generation right there and I think this just saves you a lot of the work from having to do this yourself because in the previous video what we did is we actually had to find a reference image then plug that in then go to chat GPT and have it create a prompt for us and then we came back to come for UI paste that prompt and then you weren't sure what you were gonna get but here it's kind of a guaranteed result almost every single time I mean I've been talking this whole time you guys can see the generation process in real time so if you're running this in RunPod, for example this is just a game changer you just load up this workflow set this to you know 8 16 24 whatever you want it to be save all your generations filter through and pick the best ones and that's really all you have to do and from there you can pretty much scale your data set to basically an infinite an amount of images, right? If you think that you need, let's say 60 images for your data set, you could totally get to 60 using just these two workflows and have a pretty healthy split between portrait photographs and lifestyle photographs. Again, you guys saw those generations coming across, but I'm just going to run this again so you guys can see more because we do have a workflow exactly like this that uses the 2509 version that's inside of our website, Silent Snow AI. And truthfully, I can be honest here, these results are way better than the 25. 509 model and there's really not too huge of a difference between the processes here. Here's kind of a, an example of what I mean. A little bit weird, right? Like the text doesn't quite make sense. The environment looks a little weird overall. But then you get something like this that comes out really solid and is a great option for Laura training. She's got a different expression. She's in a unique environment. The clothing looks good. The lighting is dynamic. Here's another really great example. Again, sometimes text comes out kind of weird, but that's fine because we're not really worried about that. What we're mostly worried about is our character and how they look and the consistency because we're using these for LoRa dataset images, not as Instagram posts. Here's kind of one weird image where nothing's really coherent, but as you guys have seen, you know, it's more positive well-rounded images than kind of weird ones like this. So that is pretty much it for this video, guys. If you want access to these workflows, these are specific to our paid members. Our paid tier is $5 a month. 
and you can also buy this as an individual standalone package that's up to you but unfortunately this one will not be given away for free at this time if you are looking for free workflows you can check out our previous video with the nano banana c dream versions as those are free from me but there is a cost to actually running those workflows via nano banana and c dream which are both api models so that is it i will see you guys in the next one